What's up, everyone? Welcome to Stan Philly Sports History for September 6, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. It is Eagles game week, and I must say, the fly shirt came. I highly, highly recommend picking this up. Go to phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for your fly shirt. Any of the other Kelly Green stuff they have, they have Philly stuff. Sixers, Flyers, if you're getting ready for the Flyers, Sixers season, Union playoff push, you name it, they got it. Go to phillygoat.com, use that promo code Jim Montgomery. Won't have it in time for Sunday, but get it in time early. They have some hoodies, be prepared for when it gets chilly. Get a nice little fly Kelly Green hoodie, but definitely check them out. phillygoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. I am pumped. All right, sticking with the Eagles. Uh, they named their captains yesterday. Uh, no real surprises, I don't think. Um, Jalen, Kelsey, Lane, uh, Fletcher, BG, Darius, um, Jake Elliott, AJ, and Devontae are the captains. Again, no real big surprises as those are basically the leaders of your team. Uh, they, the official depth chart came out, and I really, really like this. They had all four running backs um, – Gainwell, Swift, Penny, and Scott listed as number one. A little bit of gamesmanship there. I like it. Um, I saw this stat too, and this is uh, something that I, I could totally see see happening. I know there's some um, value if you if you bet to take Jalen Carter as the defensive rookie of the year, uh, but. No rookie since Reggie White in 1985 has had double-digit sacks for the Eagles. The closest was like Corey Simon, I think, in the um, 2000 or whatever his rookie year was. So it's possible. I, I really think after seeing him play limited time in the preseason as well as what everybody's saying, I think it's very well possible that Jalen Carter could tie that record with Reggie White. Now, will he get the 13 or 15, whatever Reggie had in 13 games? I doubt it, but double-digit sacks, I think, are definitely on the table for Jalen, uh, as well as Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, also, I want to send condolences out to Hugh Douglas. Uh, some was tragically killed in a car accident the other day. Uh, Eagles legend, uh, good guy on the radio right now for WIP. So thoughts and prayers with his family as they go through this difficult time. All right, sticking with the football theme, too, one more thing. Uh, be on the lookout and subscribe and check out the, uh, my buddies at the Clashing Conferences podcast. They should be getting ready to drop this week's episode previewing week one in the NFC East. And, again, it's just if you like guys talking shit, um, if that sounds like something you do either or as well, uh, check them out. And they have a representative from all four teams in the NFC East. Uh, the link will be in the description for that well we have some Sixers news it's not necessarily anything regarding Harden but welcome back to Danny Green uh Dan they re-signed Danny Green I guess he'll provide a little bit of shooting off the bench uh some veteran leadership but he's also 175 years old so it's hard to get super excited about that uh but he might not play much defense, but at least he can come off and shoot a couple threes if you need it. Uh, we do have some Flyers news as well. Uh, Mishkoff, their seventh overall pick, apparently is being benched uh, be, as a healthy scratch on his, uh, I think it's the KHL uh, hockey team. And that was one of the things that going into the draft that they were afraid of. Uh, basically, the team obviously doesn't want their stars going to the NHL, and they're not interested at all in helping develop guys for the NFL. So they tend to kind of st – young star players, they, they put them on ice and, and in favor of the veterans. So it's worth noting, I mean, we still – he wasn't coming over for three years, so there's still lots of, lots of time for that. But it's just one of those reports that came out. So we shall see. Tough one for the Phils. Uh, eight nothing. Uh, first of all, I hate West Coast games. It's just I know people out in the West Coast uh, <clears throat> really like and uh, 
it's I've been out in Vegas and it is nice to watch the game early in the afternoon and then have the rest of your night. But for us out here on the East Coast, these like it's just way too late. Uh, but they lost eight nothing. Um, I think it's time to start being concerned with the pitching. I mentioned it the other day and it's been masked by the offense, just like the other night. Uh, they haven't been good. The pitchers have not been good. Lorenzen has been terrible since his no hitter. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I there's still time to fix it, but I, I'm starting to get a little concerned. Uh, the lead over the Cubs is down to a game and a half. They're still up four and a half total in the wild card, but we'd much rather have that first round series at home. Uh, Trey Turner is going to be out for a couple games uh, as he takes paternity leave. Uh, they are back in action this afternoon, uh, coming back home then. But Wheeler's on the mound, but it's going to be a tough, tough game for them. Uh, and then a tough stretch coming up. Seven of their next 14 are against the Braves. And I I get that it's one of the teams you're going to have to face in the playoffs, and that's all well and good, but it's still tough. And, I mean, I think also it's tough for the Braves. Uh, so out of those seven games, they need at least to win three or four of them. So, if they can pull out today, I, I think that'll go a long way in kind of giving them the day off tomorrow and then setting up. Uh, I think they're off tomorrow. Now I have to check on that. They might be playing the Braves tomorrow. But uh, tough series coming up, but let's take care of business today and win that series against the Padres. If you want more Phillies coverage, check out 2008 Phils, large, world's biggest email Phillies newsletter. Currently giving subscriptions at 75% off for this day in Philly sports history listeners. The link is in the description. Get you access to everything they have on their site. The 2008 World Series banner t-shirt, uh, as well as 2008 Phils will follow your Twitter. Uh, you get access to giveaways, tickets, autographs, th- things like that. And it's all $2 a month, $20 for the year. I, it's definitely worth it. I highly, highly recommend it. And again, the link is in the description. All right, today we're going to go back to 1952. And on this day, the Phillies came back from being down 6-2 to two to beat the Boston Braves in 17 innings in Game 1 of a doubleheader. Game 2, they started it, but they suspended it due to Philadelphia curfew laws. They quit playing at 11.59. They were just going to pick it back up uh, at the same time the next day. The hero of Game 1, though, was Del Ennis, who led off the top of the 17th with a home run. He also wore number 14. More on that in a minute. But the the thing with, about this home run was he had a fractured wrist that he hurt earlier in the game, uh, trying to make a catch and falling on the concrete. Um, this is depicted, if you've ever seen the Phillies dream scene painting, uh, I've seen it online. They have it at Citizens Bank Park. Um, legend has it, or at least the tour guys at the Citizens Bank Park tour, was that Ennis said, I'm sick of playing this game and decided to just hit the home run and end it. I'm sure, it's, I don't know if that really happened, but it makes for a good story, especially if you're taking a tour of Citizens Bank Park and you see the sign hanging up. Uh, but it is depicted there. He's got a cast on his wrist while he's talking to Mike Schmidt. Uh, he did also play in game two. Uh, until the curfew, he didn't play the next day in the in the the restart or pickup of the game, but still played with that fractured wrist in and most of game two. Um, also impressive in game one was Robin Roberts, who got the win, twenty third of the year, but went all seventeen innings, gave up eighteen hits, five earned runs, and five strikeouts in seventeen innings of work. Insanity! But on this day, it was all about Del Ennis. In 1952, they came back from a 6-2 deficit to win a game in 17 innings when Del Ennis hit the game-winning home run with a fractured wrist, a game in which Robin Roberts went all 17 innings. Do you think Robin Roberts is available to pitch for the Phillies in the postseason? Just saying. All right, I mentioned number 14, but it's time for who wore it best, Philadelphia, and Last night we or yesterday we did number fourteen and it was basically down to Pete Rose and Jim Bunning. We could have threw Del Ennis in there, uh, but I think we made the right choice. And in a close one, fifty-seven percent of the vote, Pete Rose did beat out Jim Bunning. I would like to point out that Ty Detmer also received the vote. For those of you keeping score at home, but it's Pete Rose wearing number fourteen the best. 
Today, in honor of Zach Wheeler starting, we're going to go with number 45. And there's not too many notables who have worn 45 in Philadelphia. Uh, Pedro Martinez for that 09 Phillies National League Championship team. Current long snapper Rick Lovato. And Eagle legend Tom Brookshire. Many people don't realize this. He wore 45 his rookie year before he went into the Air Force. And when he came back out, he was number 40. And that is the number that's retired. But for one year, his rookie year, he wore number 45. Uh, but today we're going all Phillies again. We have three representatives that wear number 45. Uh, since he's pitching today, let's go Zach Wheeler. He did help lead the Phillies to the postseason last year. He's having another remarkable season this year. We need him to be the ace today to, to shut down the Padres. So Zach Wheeler is candidate number one. Number two is Terry Mulholland, another guy who pitched a long time for the Phillies, helped lead them to the 93 World Series, pitched a no-hitter in 1990. Uh, just a solid guy that you knew was going to eat up innings when you put out there. He was number 45. And finally, hero of the 1980 World Series, got the last out by striking out Willie Wilson, Tug McGraw. This should be a good one, and I, I can see it going along generational lines. But I'm anxious to see what you think. Let me know who wore number 45 the best. Did I miss somebody? You guys have been coming up with some great guys that I've missed who worn these numbers. So let me know who wore number 24 or number 45 the best. Was it Zach Wheeler, Terry Mulholland, or Tugger? You gotta believe. But let me know. Get that vote to me on social media. Leave a comment. Text message me. Smoke signals. Actually, don't do smoke signals because it's dry out and it's hot. It might start a forest fire. But let me know who wore number 45 the best on this day. It was number 14, Del Ennis, hitting the game-winning home run in the 17th inning of game one of a doubleheader with a broken wrist to lead the Phillies to victory over the Boston Braves. Big series with the Braves coming up, but let's take care of business today with number 45, Zach Wheeler, on the mound in San Diego. Eagles named their captains. There will be due back to the future probably at some point tomorrow so stay tuned for that go check out philly goat i mean this the shirt i mean tell me this shirt is not phenomenal it is phenomenal go grab the t-shirt go buy it use the promo code 10 percent off help everybody out get ready for the season let's go all right go have yourselves a wednesday this has been this day in philly sports history i'm jim montgomery and until next time i will see you when i see you